What's going on folks? George aka Hooked on the Fly 2 and today we're going to be talking two flies. What are two flies? What is the advantage of a two fly? What do you use a two fly for? Why would you use a two fly versus a regular fly? These are all and more questions we're going to cover here in today's video. So let's dive down into it and let's talk tube flies. Why are we talking tube flies? We're talking tube flies because HMH has been developing uh, tube flies for over 25 years. Uh, they're one of the largest manufacturers in the world for tube flies and they have a variety of tube flies and in my opinion it's the best tube fly system on the market. World War II, uh, the English were using a lot of hooks to make flies and with the whole entire war going on and they weren't producing all the hooks the fishermen needed for Atlantic salmon, for sea trout, for trout. So this one gentleman, I, f I don't know his name off the top of my head, but, but he developed a system where he could use a plastic tube, attach some junction tubing to the back of it, and use cheap hooks that you could get at any hardware store at the time to attach to the back and make it effective to the point where he could go fishing. So that's how tube flies kind of came along. All right, so let's get started with the first thing first. What is a tube fly? A tube fly is a fly tied on a tube. That's exactly what it is. All right, and that's that right there. And you could do a variety of patterns on this. Um, Tube flies get a lot of, I guess, not deception, but um, they're very unappreciated. Most people think tube flies are for Atlantic salmon steelhead fishing only, but that's false. For quite some time now, tube flies have been very popular in a variety of fishing, anywhere from panfish to trout to bass to striped bass, to any saltwater species, and steelhead, Atlantic salmon, but a lot of guys that tie in tubes for pike and muskie. Why use a tube fly versus a regular fly? Well, there's several advantages to tube flies. First of all, the biggest advantage to tube flies is you could exchange your hook to a different size whenever you want to or if the hook gets dull and you don't have a sharpener with you or you just don't carry a sharpener with you you could change that out if the fly is not swimming correctly because you might have not weighed it out correctly with a tube fly you change the hook and you can now properly kill your fly the other advantage is when a fish takes a tube fly the tube fly flies up the leader and only the hook remains in the fish's mouth Therefore, your flies don't get destroyed. They last twice as long uh, or even longer. If you have a toothy critter, your flies don't get destroyed. The hooks to use for a tube fly. So, um, depending what type of fishing you're doing, uh, I like to use tube fly hooks only. However, if you're going into salt water or you're going for pike, musky, or even like largemouth, you might want to vary your hook into it. Um, I highly recommend using a straight hook eye or even like a stinger hook. Anytime you start going with a down eyed hook, what's going to happen is it's going to ride up this way or it's going to ride down this way. It's not going to kill the, the fly correctly. Also, any offset hook I stay away from. Offset hook, what it tends to do, it tends to turn the fly over and sometimes on a strip as you're stripping it, sometimes they'll even cause it to spin all the way around constantly. Therefore, your streamer's not effective. What's needed to tie tube flies? So what's needed to tie tube flies uh, is any tying material you normally use for a fly, you could use for a tube fly. So HMH carries two different tools to use for a tube fly. They have the starter tube system, 
they have the premium tool system but they also have a, a shank adapter that could be used for shanks as well as tubes and the tools let's talk about the the, uh, the starter and the premium tool for the starter and the premium tool you have to have a vise that can hold up to two odd hook so the starter tool I have some notes here uh, includes two stainless pins 0 0.01 inch in diameter and 0.62 in diameter that fits all HMH tubes the premium tool has the same body as the starter tool with two machine tapered mandrels uh, same dimension as the starter which is point zero four one and point zero six two they also have a shank adapter that is uh, you could in insert into your vise or if you have the crossover vise you could remove your jaw and replace that jaw put in your shank adapter which will hold your two uh, tubes as well as straight shanks let's talk some tubes so hmh has a variety of tubes and colors uh, rigid tubes are great for deer hair patterns uh, and anything that you use like bulky materials for uh, uh, on and are also great for when you like to apply a lot of tension to your thread if you're like heavy-handed tire and you like to apply a lot of tension the rigid tubes are great for that the tube sizes that are available are large they're one eighth of an inch and the small are three thirty second of an inch with that being said on the rigid side you could also buy the thick wall the tw um, which are even more sturdier tubes uh, they're great for saltwater patterns and pike or musky flies however they do require a 0 0.031 inch diameter uh, mandrel which you would have to inquire through HMH because it's not something they just carry on the website the other thing that they carry is polytubes polytubes are semi flex LD PE tubing uh, meaning they could just they have more bend they're softer uh, and what polytubes are great for is if you're doing any midwinter late winter fishing where it's really cold like you're going steelhead fishing up in BC in the winter or even fishing the Great Lakes in the winter um, with that poly tube being soft and flexible when you get into the freezing temperatures your tube won't crack uh, so I highly recommend that you pick up poly tubes if you're doing steelhead fishing um, or Atlantic salmon fishing in the winter uh, they're especially great for intruders so if you're a big intruder guy or a lady and you want to tie some intruders on tubes, I highly recommend getting the poly tubes. I said they come in variety uh, of colors, so you get anything from pink to uh, green uh, to like fluorescent yellow, purple, red, clear, uh, light pink, darker pink and uh, then they have something called sinking tubes and sinking tubes are great if you want to gauge your level of fishing of where you want to put your fly um, in the water as far as you know your depth you want to control your depth the sinking motion of your fly and so on and so forth you want to keep it in the zone right aluminum tubes are a uh, light they sink slow and they dra drift very naturally they have two different copper tube uh, sizes the 332nd is a low profile and it sinks two to three times faster than your aluminum then they have the 1 8th which six, uh, sinks quick and has a thick wall HMH provides provides cones as well they have uh, three different colors they have brass chrome and black the sizes they come in are large medium small and micro 
So as I showed you previously, this is your premium tool. Like I said, it comes with these two mandrels. Um, comes with your standard tool, uh, vice adapter. And uh, on the back, you have plenty of tubes and junction tubing to play with. Simply, all you have to do is install this into your vise just like this. Tie it down. Now you're secured. Now you can take your mandrel and just put it in here just so we don't lose it. What you're going to do is you're going to just do a straight press down. And it's just going to cut it. And there's your tube. Now to prep this tube further... What you want, you want either some kind of a candle or you could just have a good old big lighter. And what I mean by flare, you just bring your blue flame to your tube and you're going to flare the edges. And this will help your junction tubing to stay on. You flare it just like that and that's all you need right there. You don't need to go crazy. Now that you have that flared, now you're ready to install it into your tool. So you're going to slide it up your mandrel all the way, all the way up into there. And then when you're installing it in here, you just adjust this bottom knob to open it up more or to close it. What I'm going to do here, I'm going to actually take it past this little donut. And now I'm going to just take this and lock it down. Once it's locked in, your tube is no longer going to slip. And if you adjusted your, your mandrel all the way in, it's not going to ride up and down. It's going to stay. So now when you apply any kind of thread, whether it's GSP, mono, or whatever, your tube is not going to spin. The number one mistake is when people tie tube flies, they do not lock this in. When they don't lock it in, the tube starts spinning and you start fighting with it. Now that we covered the tool, uh, we're going to go into our tube vise. Alright, so your tube vise works kind of like a drill bit. Uh, a drill bit's got like a chuck and this has a similar thing as you can see that's moving out, moving in. If you have one of these or you end up buying the shank tool, all you do is you put your tube on your mandrel, then you open up your, your jaws, squeeze it in there, and now you have your tube ready to go. And once you apply your thread to this, same thing as the other one, your thread will not slip. You won't have to fight your tube from slipping. So now let's get into some other stuff. About it, HMH has several different types of tubes. These are the rigid tubes, in large, and they're the one eighth of an inch. These are five inch long tubes, and every packaging comes with your junction tubing. Um, besides that, HMH also has the small tubes, which are these. Rigid tubes and small, these are the 332nd rigid tubes, uh, very small. They also come in 5 inch lengths of colors. And here are some variety of colors. These are the poly tubes in large. Um, they're as well as, as long as your um, rigid tubes. And on the bottom here it says it doesn't nest a micro tube. So if you want to make a smaller front, you could do that as well. So these are your aluminum tubes. This is the one and one half inch. These come in uh, half inch, three quarter of an inch, one inch, one and a quarter inch, and one and a half inch. Um, that goes for all the co colors from copper to aluminum. Um, and the bigger tubes and the smaller tubes. So this is your inch and a half here. As you can see, they're much, much longer. This particular fly is tied on a half, um, 
on a three quarter inch uh, copper tube and on the back it's got the junction tubing so uh, I'm going to show you how to put these tubes together so you have an idea this is your micro tubing so each uh, package of your weighted tubes like these right here they come with micro tubing in here and that's this little tube and this is your junction tubing that joins the hook so this is your micro two and a half tube here um, for demonstration purposes it's just slightly easier as you could see um, there's your copper inch and a half long tube and what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take my micro tubes and slide it through the reason why I use micro tubing and metal is if you take your leader right through here what's gonna happen is this metal edge this metal edge of the tube is gonna start cutting into your leader material and eventually you're gonna lose your fly so you take your micro tubing you slide it through once you have it slid through here this is how I do it just easier I'm gonna leave a little bit out once again you gotta flare it so you could use a candle or you could use your lighter I'll flare it and I'm using the bottom of the flame on a candle you definitely want to use the bottom of the flame on this I'm just gonna use the blue flame and I'm gonna flare that out to the point where it gets bonded to that tube right there once that's all done I could either come with scissors and I could cut this with scissors to length which let me flip it so it doesn't fall and I could come in here with my scissors or you could use a razor razors always preferred but if you notice kind of leaves you a squished end right there so I'm gonna clean it up with a razor as we showed you previously And when you cut it with a razor, now you get a nice round look. All right? So I'm going to come in with the lighter. And with the lighter again, just use that blue flame. And just slowly start getting that tube to flare. You need that flare to hold that copper on. So once it's on there, sometimes what happens is that hole closes up too much and you can't fit your mandrel through it. So what I'll do is I'll come in with my bodkin and now you're ready to tie on this. So now that we have this tube explained and the weighted tubes explained, let's check out some of the cones. These are your large black cones. They also have them in small, medium, and micro. These are your medium brass cones. And these are your medium nickel or aka chrome to put these cones on you simply do it the same way you do with the hook with the exception of you would tie your whole entire fly all the way to the end and then once you're all finished you slide your cone on just like that so if this is your fly it would look like that you start taking it a little back, you start getting a little off balance. So you want to keep it about right there. And those are your cones. Now that you've learned about tubes, head over to HMH, pick up some tubes, and start tying some tube flies.